All right. Good day to you, people. Apparently, yesterday, I was under um, somewhat some attack in terms of, I don't even know what. I, I had an audio that um, some of you recall. And for some reason, uh, I think we need to put that on limiter. For some reason... For some reason, yeah, it's not colored. Mm -hmm. I start again. Good morning, uh, good day to you, whatever time it is. Um, this is Zef Daniel, the Zed Jaw Studio that uh, is cranking them out. My door is open, and you can hear. Uh, so, in my soundproof booth here, uh, no, we're letting the sounds in. Uh, yesterday, I attempted, and I, I fell a victim yesterday of my own Rima. You know, I, I explained that, that there was a really, I thought, an important pod out. It was just burning to come out. The Lord had been speaking to me all night. It, it, it came out at three in the morning, you know, 10 of three. Um, it was all about... Um, what we've been seeing lately, and because I be, people don't have it, they don't understand that what you're seeing is supernatural. And this is, and I cannot capture the podcast yesterday. I can't do it as well. I don't think, in terms of alerting you as to what happened with, um, you know, the storm and the election and the storms and the 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 various things you saw, that has nothing to do with. Mitt Romney not having a decent ground game and all these other excuses and political ideas. None of these have anything to do with anything. America was ended. And um, the Lord spoke, even though I inquired of him for up, to, I think, a couple of years. We're a young country. You remember. Yeah, we're a young country. Lord, can we have more time? Uh, you know, the other countries have had more time. And I kind of based the argument on that and the answer yesterday was no. The place has gone too wicked. It's gone past the point of no return. So the Lord spoke very clearly, allowing the sorcery to go forward that you see uh, like e emblematic in Barack Obama. But you have to understand there's a lot of people, a whole force of Luciferians behind him. And, um, you know, this was a, you know, the the Romney people and the the. The, 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 you know, the, the, the pundits on TV and all these idiots, what they don't understand is, you know, Romney was up against something supernatural and his God didn't deliver for him. That's all you need to know there. He delivered for Barack Obama because I believe it's the same God. You know, the choice, but ultimately the Lord Jesus, Yahweh, is you know, meeting out justice in ending the USA, in ending America. Um, and he has said, and he spoke very clearly, you will not touch this man, Barack Obama. And I spoke about that back in 2008. You will not touch this man. He will be successful in doing what he is going to do. And this is all part of the overall plan, if you like. I mean, the encouraging thing is, yes, it plays right into um, the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation and, uh, and some other ones that are out there that I don't necessarily go with. But, you know, you have prophecies about the Mahdi and, you know, the coming Mahdi and how a guy named Hussein will be, you know, a, a black man from the West, will have mighty powers and be in charge of the military and bring about that. You know, you've heard about those. And they, you know, it all kind of lines up. But the people behind them and the people in the press and people say, well, how could they do this? How could they? Because they worship him. They worship the beast. They recognize their Messiah. It wasn't a joke. They literally worship him. The storm was literally sorcery. Uh, harp and all those things are, are nothing compared to sorcery. Don't you understand that? No technology the military has and all the aliens and everything compares to Sorcery. I mean, if, if you like, it's all part of sorcery. But nothing compares to it, okay? Nothing compares to it. 
And so as we're looking at this thing, it's supernatural and it has, you know, I guess a lot of people are just kind of left wanting, you know, they, um, they prophesied this and they prophesied that about America. I had uh, been reminded that I had actually predicted Obama would win and that everything would, you know, everything I'm saying now I've said before. At the same time, I wanted to try to save America from, because I'm, you know, I don't want to see people suffer. I mean, now they're going to, and I've had to harden my heart about it, but I don't want to see them suffer. Now, harden my heart, meaning, you know, you're, you're seeing it right now in New York City. You're seeing the, 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 what the world will look like a few years from now. What you see in New York today at the aftermath of the storm and the ineptitude of government, which is incredibly ironic and, and, and hard to watch, it's going to be exported to the whole world with food riots and, you know, uh, martial law and, and um, um, the, the, the advent of Sharia law of uh, gallivanting in and taking over. But the reason it's taking over is because the United States was defeated in the eyes of all who know behind the scene. In other words, in the chess game, it's 1776 to 2012, period. And this man ended it. He is a, um, say what you will, he's been allowed to conquer. So I'm going to read right now from Daniel 8. Well, I try to collect my thoughts and, and try to remember what I said yesterday. And so you can understand what has happened. You know, I accept God's word and his judgment as holy and in, um, implacable. So here we go. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared to me at the first. And I saw in the vision, now it was so, and what I saw was in Shushan, the palace, which is in the pro province of Elam. And I saw a vision, and I was by the river Ulai, and, or Ulay, one or the other, and I lifted my eyes up, and I saw, behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but the one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, and the beast could, uh, and no beast could stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. We're talking about political figure here. Just, but just listen and apply as you will. He did according to his will and magnified himself. And as I was considering, behold, a he goat came from the west over the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram and that had the two horns, which I saw standing before the river, and ran upon him the fury of his power. He's describing like a, like a dream vision. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with anger against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground, that is the he-goat, casted the, the, the ram to the ground and trampled upon him, and there was none that could deliver him out of his hand. So he won. And the he-goat magnified himself exceedingly. When he was strong, the great horn was broken, and instead of it there came up four notable horns toward the four winds of heaven. And out of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. And it waxed great even unto the host of heaven, and some of the host and the stars it cast down to the ground and trampled upon them. It magnified itself even to the prince of the host and took away from him the continual burnt offering, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down, and the host was given over to it together with the continual burnt offering through transgression, and it cast down truth to the ground, and it did its pleasure and prosper it, or it prospered through, this is probably not a good um, translation because it's basically through black magic, okay? It's through black magic that he succeeded. And I heard the holy one, a holy one speaking, and another holy one said unto the certain one who spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the continual burnt offering and the transgression that maketh desolate, to give both the sanctuary and the host to, the trodden, uh, to be trodden underfoot, and he said to me, unto 2,300 evenings and mornings 
and then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And it came to, to pass that I, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision, that I sought to understand it. And behold, there stood before me the appearance of a man. I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near when I stood, and when he came, I was affrighted and fell upon my face. But he said to me, understand, son of man, for the vision belongs to the time of the end. Now he was speaking with me, and I fell into a deep sleep and with my face toward the ground. And he touched me and set me upright. And he said, behold, I will make thee know that what shall be in the, in the latter time of the indignation, for it belongs to the appointed time of the end. The ram which you saw, which had two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. And the rough he-goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. And as for that which was broken, in the place whereof you stood up, the four kingdoms shall stand up out of the, na- out of the nation, but not with his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and do his pleasure. And he he shall destroy the mighty ones and the holy people. And through his policy or policies or political policies, he shall cause witchcraft to prosper in his hand. He shall magnify himself in his heart. And in their security shall he destroy many. He, in other words, he shall destroy the destroy the, the he shall destroy the security, the retirement of many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evenings and mornings which hath been told is true, but thou shut up this vision, for it belongs to many days to come. And I Daniel fainted and was sick certain days, and I rose up. I did the king's business, and I wondered about the vision, but I never understood it. Um, well, we understand it, dear brother. What you're talking about, the very last piece, and this is, I thank uh, uh, Sister for sending this, this scripture to me, but I thought I would put it in context and read the whole thing and show how we have basically the, the kingdoms of Persia and Greece, in other words, Western civilization and all the things that have come that would produce this situation in the very last uh, few verses of chapter 8 produces this man of witchcraft, of sorcery, who by sorcery will destroy many and anyone and everyone that comes against. And by signs and wonders of sorcery, storms, all these things. The storm wasn't harp. It was sorcery. Did they know they would be successful in a, in a re-election bid through their black magic? No, but they did it, and then it was rewarded because Yahweh said, I will, no one will touch this man. No one will touch this man. No one will touch this man. No one will touch these people. They will bring it to fruition. They will bring the cup of indignation to fullness and overflowing. They will bring it because this country is no more. It's been delivered into the hands of these people for a judgment against the people who sold out for trinkets and security and through the, the source of blessing out in a dis, such a disrespectful way that now it's the end of the people. And I wouldn't be surprised if every man, woman, and child here in, in this nation is killed. Because there is no protection from Yahweh. Further, he showed me that the churches, and and, and obviously Mitt Romney's praying, means nothing. But all the churches combined can pray, means nothing. Not one prayer was answered. Nor will it be again. Until the time of the cleansing. By blood. Which, of course, is to the liking of this one. Who comes from the Hego. This one that... that, um, this one, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come full, a fierce king of, a king of fierce countenance, a king, you know, they, to them he's a messiah, but he's a king. 
and he will come um, and he will, by, his, by the power of black magic and sorcery, he uh, will destroy uh, many, but not by his own power. And also not alone, because as I said, they knew the, the storm was supernatural and the people in Congress and, you know, I mean, bring it back to the politics of the time. God's completely wrapped up in politics. So, you know, this is something I, I knew full well. And I've kind of been in a way a little chastising toward people that thought they couldn't take part in politics or take part in the world because God's not there. It's like, of course he's there. Make your voice be heard. You know, don't vote for Satanism, which is communism. Uh, vote for free market, you know, vote for the Constitution. It's pretty simple, even if it's a lousy candidate. I mean, you know, but now I would agree with them. Now the Lord has spoken. See, I have to listen to the Lord. When he tells me, okay, stop, this is it. I say, okay, and I'm sharing it now. This is now it. It is official and in the minds of even the secular world, 1776 to 2012. See, it's not just me, but now, now we have a marker in history where all would say, this was it. And according to Yahweh, his, his answer, of course, for more time is, no. No, it's over. And that's, you know, the, 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 it, it waited for a time in history. Oh, I knew it was over. Yeah, I knew it was over a long time. Yeah, you knew it was over when you were born. When you were born, it was just like it is now. But you didn't have it. Because he wanted us to keep going until the time where he said it was over. He's the one. And you put him in a box? No. Let him be God and you be his servant. You don't tell him what to do. Too many Christians said, oh, if God doesn't smack down America now, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. That is a very arrogant, insipid, and disgusting statement. And I've said it myself and I repent. It's just wrong. His timing is sacred. Anyway, so now it's official. And it, when it's made official, it's in the minds of many, no matter what religion, everywhere. It's not just, oh, according to our little cult here, this happened. No, no, it's official. It's big. America was damned, not just over, damned, cursed by God. So it, the transgressions, well, I, don't, I can't see behind those scenes. I know full well that Satanists derive great pleasure when a people destroy themselves that they caused. You know, like people voting for something they don't really know what they're voting for. You know, they, they love that. It gets them off, quite frankly. Um, they get off more on you destroying yourself in front of them than, you know, forcing you to be a sacrifice. That's a greater sexual pleasure. Everything goes to sexual pleasure with Satanism. It's all, it's all measured on either sexual pleasure or the pleasure of the palate. Uh, but then you knew that. So. so I am just simply fixing this date and really um, underscoring it because it's um, very important to understand why. And, you know, people say it's wicked. You had prophets here like Dimitri Duderman and other people who basically were saying the word of the Lord that if you don't um, straighten up and if you don't, uh, you know, repent or whatever, it's over. Well, it, you know, I predicted there would be no repentance. And I predict further there will be no repentance on the day of death when rivers of blood run in America, when there's no help for anyone, when riots overtake the cities, when Chicago becomes a burned out husk. And it will. When lawlessness rules the land, when people are, when the book of Eli kind of scenario appears, and it will. And this is the last kind of final thing they want to bring in before clamping down. And they'll, they'll attempt to clap down, but the sacrifice of people doing each other in is too delicious to bring martial law too soon, you know, to bring troops in too soon. Let, let them kill each other for a while. And then, don't you understand? <laughs> of course you do. So through witchcraft and trickery did the election get um, done. It, it's hard to explain because of all the numbers and polls, and now people are just saying, well, the ground game was, they have all these excuses. It was witchcraft and sorcery. And because a guy like Romney doesn't understand that and his people, me thinks he's spiritually inept and spiritually dead, completely. He doesn't get it. And furthermore, all his prayers 
did, weren't answered. All Barack Obama's prayers were answered. The prayers of the Catholic Church went unanswered, and the prayers of the uh, American Protestant Church went unanswered because those churches are death and deadness and dead. If they wouldn't worship Satan, maybe, you know what I mean? If they didn't have a little conflict. But Yahweh is speaking to, the, to them all. No, I will not answer your prayer, Catholics, or you Protestants, again. Not if it deals with America. I have spoken it. America is now a territory that can be overrun internally or externally. Either way, you will not have law enforcement, CIA, American military. Nobody will oppose it, and no one can oppose this man. I'm not saying that denying the scriptural kind of application and whether this is literal or whether this is thematic, because we have both in, in the Bible, doesn't matter to me. This is what, you know, the, yes, everyone reaps what they sow. So here you go. And through his policy and policies, he shall cause witchcraft or craft to prosper in his hand. I'm letting you know that's what that means. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. <laughs> And their security, you know, security, retirement, uh, police, you know, security. That was, in other words, the security you have of the nation shall destroy, and, and, their, and in their security shall he destroy many. And in their security shall he destroy many. In other words, in, the, in their confidence. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. But, and here comes the one line of hope for you but he shall be broken without hand. In other words, he will be broken and alone without help. He will be broken without help. No one will help him. As it came, it will go. And, you know, we as a people need to not be so... Um, fervent so much about it's not really about countries really so much it's that we need to really repent in the sense of not mea culpa of direction and put all our faith and hope in Jesus Christ and his provision his way and his word and he will lead and he will direct and it, it, look it was supernatural because he allowed them to get away with it all sorcery is subject to the Lord's will whether he allows it or not he can quash any sorcery done anywhere, but he allowed it to happen. And I did, con you know, I was given the, the, the um, confirmation by the Lord that the storm was supernatural. Everyone's trying to say harp and this and that. No, it was a supernatural event. And I think most people would look back and go, yeah, I think. Same thing with the, the you know, there were um, other magical storms like the one at Tampa before the convention. Things like the... Uh, a two brutai like the um, uh, Julius Caesar uh, play, um, you know, where uh, uh, where uh, the part of Brutus was played by uh, Chris Christie, who stuck the knife in once at the convention, then stuck it in him again at the storm, and stuck it in and twisted like a good Sicilian will do. I was married to one. I understand that. <laughs> yep. And my daughter's half Sicilian, so I better watch out what I say. Um, so you just have to really, you know, get the uh, get the implication. Now, um, what was at stake and what are the spoils? Uh, and what's a, another irony is all the people voting for their, you know, the handouts, the Hispanics and the, you know, the black community and various people, they have inherited nothing. There will be a time very shortly from now where no entitlements are given out, the food stamps, all that, it dries up because it's just their shortages. And um, this is another day of great pleasure for the elites who will be partying like they did in New York when the big tragedy happened of Sandy. They were partying Halloween and dressing up as Marie Antoinette and, and um, they, are, you know, they are the original racists. It's funny, the original racists who had slavery going are the ones who own the blacks and own the Hispanics. <laughs> They're the racists, but they, that they've been very successful in using trickery 
to uh, blame it on other people or to paint other people so that the blacks and Hispanics don't see that their benefactor hates them. And I think it doesn't matter anymore what they think because they're slated for death. So it, they're slated for death by their own allegiance, by the people they trusted. And um, that will surely come to pass because uh, you take California, for example. Um, you know, never mind the earth changes. The, 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 um, the, the chaos to come over what kind of exorbitant taxation. They just passed a Proposition 30. I understand that further taxes people that are already taxed too much. And, you know, a revolt of some sort is coming. And then the plans are through Janet Napolitano and Homeland Security to bring the tanks in. I fully see tanks in, on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. You can count on it. And I fully see riots. You can count on it. This is the, the destroyer. This is what happened. Now, all that will come to pass, as I said it would in over the last few years. I said it would all come to pass. There was a little hope that there could be a change. And, I think, and the Lord wanted me to go along and inquire. He wanted me to inquire of him. And he wanted me to try to do something. And he wanted then to tell me the answer was no. He needed me to go through that whole process. Otherwise, I would have been God myself. Oh, yeah, this country's God. I'm not going to do anything. Well, I'm not going to do anything about anything. It's all corrupt, the whole world, so I'm just going to sit here. And I'm telling you that's a blasphemy against God because he wants you to participate. He wants you to be an actor in this play. He's the author. But I, you know what? I, keep, I, I repeat that till I'm blue in the face. And there's nothing I can do because people just don't get it. And I suppose they never will. So I'm just dreaming if I think there's going to be some kind of a, you know, reprieve. Um, the other thing about the satanic people the, in this country, the, the, the thing that I mentioned in 2002, making a joke out of Satan's penis, it's no joke. It means that the nation of America is owned by Satan. The architecture points to Lucifer as the god, Satan. That, that masonry and secret societies own America, Satan. That they have secret oaths in place and are trying to do certain things with technology to bring about um, some cloning thing where they can uh, live endlessly on their own dime, Satan. Because it's a deception. Where they feel they can do whatever they want and are not seen. You are seen, Satan. In plain sight, the obelisk is a middle finger in God's face. He will put it up America's ass and impale a person with it, meaning impale the person of America with it right now. And all the people in all their secret societies, their secrets are out all over the place. They're dirty effing scum, period. They're, the only reason they keep secret is because of their perversions, their pedophilia, their snuff films, all the things they do. And it's the, unfortunately, the sisterhood that runs it all. So much for a benign matriarchy. I saw it all because I grew up in it and I saw how it all worked. And that's interesting how I ended up with, um, you know, these books on masonry and all the paraphernalia of the masonry from my grandfather who's high up in that and a member of various secret societies. And so I understood, you know, any kind of sorcery, black magic, usually involves a human sacrifice or sacrifices or Benghazi in order to get, you know, the favor of the Dark Lord from below to bring about storms and various things and election results and so forth. Um, Romney's seen as an idiot because he doesn't have favor from above and he doesn't really have favor from below, although below owns his ass. You know, and maybe he's ignorant of that, feeling that all his good works can get him off the hook. Well, that's what all the churches do. They do good works. But he is seen as well. And his, he is found to come up wanting because everything he prayed for, everything he asked for, everything he was a good boy for, he was told to go stuff it by Yahweh himself. And he's still traumatized. He still doesn't get it. He's still thinking, well, there was something wrong with the ground game or it was you know, Rents Priebus, or it was one of these people. No, it's God. 
He, no one will touch Barak. He was brought here, judgment, and to destroy. And that's exactly what he will do. And he will be successful and destroy many and the holy people. And the holy people. Sounds like Revelation 13 to me, doesn't it? What you're waiting is till Revelation 18. That's going to be a while. Now comes the pain. Own it, America, which your name is no longer. You're, you are now just RIP 2012. And um, the people here are considered to be completely unworthy by God to be saved. And indeed, he slated them for judgment. They must be doing an awful lot of bad things behind the scenes. You know, average people have must have fallen deep into that rabbit hole. Because, I mean, the way that it looks to me is it's, it's gone past the point of no return or he wouldn't have said, that's it. He wouldn't have, it, it was decisive. That is it. That would not be the case if the people weren't participating in the murders, rituals, satanic things and getting their provision from that. You know, meaning average people must have been there. I, I understand the elites. You don't get into those circles without taking a blood oath, you know, to Lucifer and without having to kill somebody to get in. I understand that. But, um, or many people, or, you know, or, or thousands of people, you know, to boost yourself. I mean, we, you know, in my book, Lamb, I, I explain all, all that. But little people who just get a little salary or something, for them to be out in the woods <laughs> is, is, uh, is the only, that's the only explanation that I have for you. That, no, it wasn't that they were dumb and complacent. It wasn't that they wanted a handout. It's that they conformed to Satan and did his bidding, which was the destruction of, in other words, Yahweh is protecting his own. And he won't allow something like that to go forward. But it has to be on the level of Sodom and Gomorrah, because, I mean, this is definitive. It's over. The, not, there's not a fire here or, or a nuke taking it out yet, but all that's on the table. Those of you who are led to live, you can, you can leave, of course. You know, they, they, they have a policy of no, no one gets out alive. <laughs> well, they're the ones that are going to suffer in the end. And they're going to suffer because without you, without people of the Lord, without some last hope, they themselves have no power. You know, they only get power by hurting you. And so without you, they have nothing. In other words, all everything they have comes from blasphemy against God. And all the Congress and all the Senate and all the people in D.C. and all their agencies and everything are Luciferian in the sense of, you know, Homeland Security is perfect. Humiliation of people in publicly in front of other people um, to teach them that they're slaves. And that's the only reason they're there harassing people and, and letting terrorists go, of course. Um, wait till they let the prisoners out of the prisons and they take over the city blocks. You'll have to pay them to have protection. Oh, that, you know, and the rest of it. There's no protection left. It's going to be every man running it through with every, every man, riots, people are going to be shooting each other. In other words, that kind of chaos is delightful and delicious to them. That is, um, you know, a multiple orgasm for them. And they'll just take that all day long, including the celebrities who are owned and operated. Mind, you think they're victims, just mind controlled? No, they're perpetrators. They have to be to get in, to be, to be number one in the snake pit, to be a Beyonce or something. You got to be a perpetrator. There's no way you can, you know, there's no innocence there. No one gets the bright lights without bowing down to the dark Lord. You hear me? It's good to remind us of these things. It's good that we remind ourselves of these realities so that you get the ground rules straight. If you belong to Jesus Christ, you're, no, you're a target. Um, but if they got rid of you, then they wouldn't exist, which is their stupidity to not understand. They think it goes on forever. But as it says, suddenly they are out and destroyed without hand, without help, in other words, without hand, meaning without help. It's just over for them. In other words, they, God allows them to do their job, 
a terrible punishment and persecution, a terrible tribulation. And then they're out. They've served their function. They're, they're just human garbage to, to the Lord. They're, they're out. You know, they're just uh, basically look at Revelation 19. They're, they're, they're only fit for the birds to pick at. And that's what will happen to them. And no one will remember them. No, Mr. Obama, no history will be written about you. Thank you. Nobody cares. It will all have been for naught. And the most amazing thing is how they keep trying to convince everyone that they're Christians or that they're holy people or that they're religious or that they care. <laughs> no, they laugh. The New York thing is just a, it's a big circle jerk for them. Absolutely. That's, but that I've, no, unfortunately I've known about their pleasures and when I was a little kid, I just couldn't believe it. No, I just couldn't believe it. I just, I, I, they're, they're trying to be adults and tell me to have morals and different, and yet then they do all this stuff that cancels out all the moral teaching. So, <laughs> you know, so for, I, I, I can't even respond to it. I mean, what can you say about it? I was just lived my whole life traumatized because, you know, um, I just, couldn't believe there was no Santa Claus, I suppose. In other words, I couldn't believe the whole world was as wicked as it was, and I was being shown a particularly evil form of wickedness that was beyond what most people see. But the point is, is, you know, and then learning that, you know, you know your basic 7-Eleven guy is bowing down to Satan, you know, killing people. And stuff. I'm like, really? You know, or participating in things that where people, you know, you know what I mean, in the, in the milieu. Oh, well, they do literally too, but I mean, it's, 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 it's all covered. You know, in other words, those deaths are accidents. Those deaths are uh, missing people. Those, you know, those are missing children and they never get addressed, but we know what happens. And because of this, and because of this deep, dark, dirty secret of America, that that's how America thrives on that. God has said, no, I mean, it has to be huge. It's the same judgment Sodom and Gomorrah got. No more having to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah, Father. You just did it. But people don't realize this vacuum you're feeling, this vacuum, this vacuum we're in, it's just the quiet before the horror. And they'll have every excuse on TV. Yeah, we're trying our best. We got the food lines. Yeah. The big thing they're looking forward to is, is uh, twisting the knife by taking all the entitlements away from the people who voted for them and, and saying, well, we can't, you know, we got a crisis we got to deal with and putting them in food lines, putting grandma and grandpa on food line. That will be an endless pleasure for them. Endless. Please. Oh, you couldn't have it, any, especially dying in the street like in the days of Joseph Stalin. That's beautiful. And then giving up all their uh, ownership of houses having the government confiscate or bulldoze them. Awesome. Now you're starting to get a little taste of how they're addicted, huh? And there's no sense going on about it. It's done. And so we move on. And in, so, in moving on, um, you know, we are here. Gee, Lord, why am I here? You're here to witness the horrors of, of and to be so strong in Christ that you don't balk at the horrors. You know, and those those Masons like Franklin Graham and stuff, and those secret society members that are posing as your evangelist, and they're going to have their comeuppance in front of you. You'll see it. He can't hide behind Samaritan's purse forever. At some point, he's going to have to come clean that, you know, we're all part of that secret thing. I'm sorry. Well, you may not get a public apology, but you will see um, like what you saw in the uh, storm. They were, you know, turned away. They may be down there right now, but I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't mind the charity people. Do, you don't have to understand my point since 2002 has been to save souls, to save souls from damnation. America was just damned. The people here, if they remain unrepentant, will burn forever and ever. They will burn. They will be in a situation. And burn is a metaphor. So they'll be in a situation of such pain and anguish. And they won't be able to die to get out of it for a long time. I mean, there may be some point of 
where everything is kind of balled up into one, where everything's forgotten about, and a new creation happens somewhere else, and you know that's fine. It's unconsciousness of uh, no memories. The Bible talks about that. So between, so you know, I'm kind of in agreement with some of these people that talk about forever and ever not meaning infinity, and I. You know, I'm going to stipulate that for you provisionally with this idea that, you know, with a little question mark. Provisionally. I don't want to insult God, you know, if that's not what he's. But that's kind of my thought on it. There's a point where, yeah, you know, the story's over. But those who are conscious, in Daniel 12, it talks about those who are, you know, sort of resurrected to everlasting damnation. And those who are resurrected to everlasting life and shine like the stars of the heavens. But we know that the stars in the heavens eventually wear out. You know, they go. See what I mean? So if you're looking at it like that, you would say that, yeah, the, 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 the people that think there is some end point to it. But does that mean a person goes free or even knows he's a person? Not necessarily. But then again, that's speculating too far ahead. I will just say this. In death, if you have to die because of, uh, say, a Muslim caliphate takeover, because you won't take the Obamacare chip, they might throw you in prison. You know, the RFID chip that has your medical information on it, which was the whole point of Obamacare, was to be able to fulfill and, and is fulfilling the, the whole beast thing. And, and, but there, there's a few other things that have to happen before there's any beast. But, I mean, the, the architecture of this kind of implantation is here. And I take it very literally that it is in the hand or in the forehead. And if that's the case, then I would say you can't take that chip. At first, there's a penalty. Um, if you don't have insurance, there's a penalty. But I think there's going to be a case to make for the chip at some point to be a mandatory thing so that they can quickly scan that you have health insurance or that you don't. The people that do take it, health insurance, will be asked to take the chip so that they can quickly scan you and they don't have to go through records to see if you've got it or you don't to make it easier for the IRS, who will be the police dogs on this, that they're going to come in to, to find out if you've got the health insurance or do you get a tax penalty. So they've hired all these IRS agents. Folks, they just don't do things like this for health care. <laughs> It's called uh, prophecy. The Bible is just literally true on this. And you better get right with the Lord Jesus Christ right now on your knees. Lord, forgive them for they now know how. Lord, forgive them for they're hypnotized. Amen. Maybe he'll wake you up. Because if you take that chip, and in that you will be bowing down to the beast or the state, and in so doing, um, they own you. And if they own you, you don't have a soul for Yahweh. You're fini. You're written out of the Lamb's book of life. You are no longer, you have met your second death. You have passed the point of no return and you're just chaff waiting to be burned, period. And that is your, your life. And that's your choice. I'm not going to block anyone from making that choice. I don't, you know, I, I, I care about those who are the Lord's and, you know, but I'm not going to just I don't get into this apostate mass praying for everybody because those prayers are never answered. I, remember, have they ever been answered? I'm praying for everyone to be saved. <laughs> and when did that happen? Not like the political thing. I'm praying for this and that. All the political signs were there that there'd be a, a change of the guard at the, at the um, you know, the Obamacare would be repealed. All those things, just like the Supreme Court justice, um, God, his name is Justice Roberts, he, where he tortured himself to come up with to save Obamacare because it's about the mark of the beast, and he's beholden to that, and that's very important to him. It's not, you don't stay up night and day trying to justify something unless you want it to go through. Justice Roberts knew he had to save it in order to save history, which is being created now, fulfilling prophecy. Because it's about the chip, the allegiance. The allegiance to Obama is people feel that if they bow down to Obama, they'll get things. So they bow down to get stuff, which is the satanic structure. 
and they, the elites wor- actually worship him. Which, of course, God laughs at because these elites are, are not elite in his eyes. They're just scum. Totally. And God does divide people like that, you know? In other words, if you do something you know is wrong, in order to get your provision, be a big man. Be a big man out there, big fame, big fortune, all that stuff. You know, you're on the nightly news. You're Brian Williams or whatever. There's a price to pay for that. There's a million guys who would like to do that job. But there's a price to pay that he paid. And that's just the bottom line of all the world. It's just like that in every everywhere. And it's a sad thing that when people do follow the Lord. And, you know, so you don't know Brian Williams. So, no, I'm just talking about the general requirements and I'm just using him as an example of someone in an elite position on a news thing that is doing a job millions of other people would like to do let's take just a rock star I don't care who you take there's a price and that price is usually because the secret societies run it they also run the universities they run all this stuff the price is always the same thing the soul And that reality, I can't get around. I just can't make it okay. Um, a guy like Mitt Romney, he was completely in, 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 entranced with, with Mormonism, which is Luciferianism. So what, what can you do? Which is, by the way, false prophecy on the part of Joseph Smith and a false prophet. There is not a Mormon that will come save America. That will never happen. Period. So right there, you can write off all of Mormonism just based on that failed prophecy forever. It, like America, is irrelevant and now written off forever as just some stupid, man-made way of getting around Yahweh, getting around the truth. Sorry, Mormons, you failed. You didn't get your squeaky king guy in there who looks all great on the outside, but inside is just still beholden. How is he any different from Barack Obama? See, that kind of hypocrisy, that somehow he was better than Obama, God has spoken to that too. I'm just kind of thrilled. I, yeah, you know, at, whenever the Lord moves, I'm thrilled, even though I know it's horrifying. I'm, I feel like, I feel relieved, don't you? I feel relieved to have my answer. I feel relieved to have done what the Lord wanted, inquire and go through this process and have my answer, and then move to the next thing. And to put it in historical context, i.e. 2012, the people that wrote it off before, well, I did the same thing, you know, time out from the architecture to secret societies to satanic ritual abuse to pedophilia to uh, international human trafficking, we covered it all. But we couldn't say America was done because that's God's place to say that. And he said it now. In the minds of everyone. And when he speaks like that, it's definitive in the minds of all. It's, a, it's an implacable reality. That's why the speculation about it before by these so-called prophets is false. Because they said it's over back then. Tribulation started back then. All these different things. Well, they were wrong because they put God in a box. And then they tried speaking for God. You don't speak for God. When he moves, everyone knows it. He's God. He moved. But how many people caught the sorcery of the storm? No one. They tried to blame a natural thing. They couldn't believe that that signs and wonders can be brought down from heaven like that. Oh, yes. Unless he stops it. And that's what happened to old Mitt. He got dusted by satanic sorcery that was powerful. And all the people behind him are scared to death that it's going to come into their homes and get them. That this power that they just witnessed is, is too much for them. And they prayed to their God and their God didn't help them. That's why they're traumatized. And here I'm just sitting here saying, uh-huh. Told you. How many times do I have to be told you so? How many times are we going to go through that? I told you one day this would come. 
oh, there's a lot of people who already denounced America and did all this kind of alternative thing, but they didn't speak for Yahweh. They spoke for themselves. Yahweh wants us to be actors in this game. He wants us to try to do something and then tell us, no, it can't be done or, or guide us. He wants us to participate in the play, not sit there thinking, judging that we know better and we're above the rest of them, like all the prophetic communities do. I'm, I'm above them all. That's why they're never blessed. That's why they never, that the whole thing is a sham. Because God won't be, let you do what you want with him. He's always going to be God. You know. Okay, so he's always going to be God. And um, I just had a mini break there. I may put a thing, but he'll always be God. And, you know, it's not about, I mean, <laughs> what do you expect if the, the primary ritual of the land is partial birth abortion? I mean, and the biggest partial birth abortionist is president. <laughs> what, what did you expect? And why do you think you got someone like that? And they're all gloating that they're going to finally have their new world. They're not going to get anything. They're going to just end up having nothing, a big fat zero. Um, they think they're going to get something, but they're not going to get anything. Now, all these pundits on the radio and right wing talk show hosts, different things are, you know, buck up and the fight goes on and all that. That is fine. You know, if people are led to do that, I'm not going to get in the way of however ever anyone's led. I'm not going to say they're stupid. If you're led to do something or try to clean up a mess, God bless you. I will remain kind of objective in this. And I'm going to, you know, I have to be here now. Um, I've been in, uh, mandated to comment on all the things you see. I draw your attention to New York City and the ineptitude of the government to help. I mean, they're helping, but I mean, it's, it's, it's the pain and misery is beyond belief. And then another storm, and it's just, it's just, it's incredible. But it is what it is. It's not <laughs> climate change. The climate changes here on Earth all the time. These sorcerers can move the climate around as well. They can, they can bring storms. They can move things around the sky. They can, they can do things you think only God can do. But a lot of it is just illusion. And a lot of it is palpable. But I mean, it, it's, it's all, you know, the people if they're scared of the principalities of the, of the wicked because of the sorcery that they can bring to bear on people's families. So they have them blackmailed. And, you know, in other words, if you don't bow down here, something bad may happen to you or your family. They're just going to have to find the strength to repent and go with the Lord. And anybody, anyone who is involved in trickery, in dual deception, it's usually dual, it's mirror, mirror, um, you know, to where they're squeaky clean on the outside, but, you know, really the affiliations and the oaths and things are wicked um, and, and are the way of death. You just have to repent. You got to come out and be separate and let the Lord, you can't do that. I mean, no one can. The Lord must open your eyes and you must come out of the situation. But these, these punishments, these seemingly unfair punishments, California will go bankrupt when there's no more money to tax. I know quite a few people that, you know, and, and people of wealth who are just going to leave. So they won't be taxed. Well, if enough people do that, then it's over. Food lines begin. Let the food lines begin, and they will. So all the people that had food stamps and health care and all that, <laughs> you'll find out. I, you know, I'm just going to let you find out on your own. You people that were all touting socialism, you don't understand when the money runs out, there is no such thing as socialism, just tyranny. And that you will, will be going, oh my God, what have I done? You made this all happen. You won't repent, most of you. You'll be bowing down for that last crumb, that last crumb. You'll be begging to take that RFID chip. You'll do anything you can thinking the government will help you or governments. Um, the only solution to this will be a global government, of course, that can then you know, through the UN that will then take care of the starving minions. And they'll, 
they'll be okay with having their entitlements taken away because no one will have anything. And, you know, and those who uh, they sought to tax and do different things to, they will inevitably um, escape or, you know, they'll do what they do. They, they go somewhere else. People in Nazi Germany, a lot of the people that woke up, um, they, they immigrated to elsewhere. Maybe they'll go to Paraguay. Maybe they'll go to um, Honduras. Maybe they'll go to New Zealand. Maybe they'll go to, you know, I don't know, Malta. I, I don't know. But if you think they'll remain to be abused, they won't. It will be the people that made all this happen. They'll be the ones abused. No amount of warning here in the Zeph report has ever um, changed their mind. In fact, quite a bit of ridicule was was given out. And you you know, but again, at the end of the day, you can't be a part of Satan's kingdom. And the other, no, yes, I put gasoline in my car. Let's define this. I um, have, you know, um, provision, whatnot. Okay. I have, uh, what else do I have? I've got a truck. I drive around. I've got enough money to put gasoline in it. Thank God I have enough money to run the studio. Okay. But what am I not doing? How does that make me any different? And it's like, no, no, nothing I do can make me any different. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and I don't take an oath. But by your affiliation, you have an oath. No, I don't. I'm not a member of any... I have no um, advanced degrees, no country club affiliation, none of that. You know, no membership of churches, which is kind of the worst thing you can do. And, you know, none of that. You know, none of that. It just, it just worked out that way. But it was through no virtue of my own. None. It was all the Lord's doing and no talent, no virtue, completely gifted to me. Even though undeserved. I've had the grace of God and him steer just when I'm about to sign on with someone, you know, someone meaning maybe an affiliation, you know, in the past, not the last few years or 10 years, but you know, before I was kind of an outcast with podcasting, which is just called outcasting. Um, you know, every time there was about to be some kind of signing on with this or that, <laughs> I'd be wrenched by the scruff of the neck back and put in another direction. Completely intervened, complete grace and intervention and supernatural protection that was un- unbelievable. Though I'm a sinner and terrible, terrible sinner. And, you know, my flesh is just, I have afflictions that can't be taken off and, you know, conflicts within myself and different things that can't be resolved in this life. I just have to live with them. And just though I'm not as good a person as like a Mitt Romney, you know, who's just stellar on the outside. It's that position I have and the position my brethren has and brethren, meaning many, many, Many on the earth. And when they see that, that you aren't going to be conformed or whatever, that they tend to um, attack, it, you know, and, and they want you, you know, good people. I've had Christians wanting me dead, threatening my life. But I said, well, what did I do? You exist. <laughs> I thought you were with Jesus. You know what I mean? We've had that conversation again and again and again and again. And they say, well, I can't be like you because I, I want to live and I got to protect my family. Oh, well, looks like I'm doing much better than you. All from the grace of God. And again, all I can say is the grace of God, not Zeph. God's intervention, not Zeph. God's leading, not Zeph. I had, I'm a, I'm a loser, man. I'm a, I'm a, a, a tra- I was traumatized for most of my life. I didn't know which way was up and down. I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't believe the world was what it was. My, my mother tried to teach it to me and tell me that this is what it is and this is what you have to do. And I'm like, well, I just don't believe it. I mean, I, I really did that. And then it got, and then, well, if you don't want to get pounded every day, you're going to have to, you know, or you're just not going to make it. Well, she's gone. I'm here. Same with my grandfather and my father and 
others before me. They, the world, can't believe. And furthermore, anyone with a prophetic ability or any kind of tuned into the spirit ability to speak or visions or any of that stuff cannot be compromised or they couldn't be used as a vessel to speak forth. The message in 2002 from the Zephyr Board is the same as today. You have to not have that affiliation. Right now, the affiliation means since it's over, there's no more provision. You know, it's over. You could kill a thousand, you know, virgins right now on a heaping fire, praising Satan all the way, and you'd get nothing for it. Because in the end of the day, God's the one who's allowed or not allowed any of that idea that that works in the first place to go through as a test, as a trial. Okay, with that, I think we've said enough. So my plea is to, for you to repent to Jesus Christ. I don't care how many country clubs you belong to, how many uh, churches, how many uh, elite guilds, how many secret societies. Take Jesus, trust him, and he'll guide you. And you'll be okay. I can promise you that with a thousand, I, I mean, there's no reason I should be even here talking to you. I am, so you can do likewise. Um, societies of man have failed now. The Pax secret societies made amongst each other in the regard of America is over. So if you're part of those, the skull and bones, this and that, it's over. I mean, you can fight over the scraps if you like, or you can get saved. I know you go to church. I know you participate in prayer meetings like Karl Rove. <laughs> <laughs> Like George Bush, uh, like W, of course. But at some point, there, 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 there. I have to ask the Lord just for a confirmation. If, if am I completely nuts? Um, I don't think so. You know, I'm sorry that yesterday I had this full podcast and it was all interrupted because I had um, the voice activator on, so it made it sound like it was skipping. It would stop every time I didn't speak and start when I did. And I had it on all the way, you know, like on the sensitivity was like 10. I thought it was a, was a, so, you know, a clipping suppression thing. So it, you know. Did I, did I get led to do that by Satan to stop the... Yeah, I don't know. Is, is this a terrible message? Um, no, I just believe it's, uh, it's good to know on the map where we stand. It's good to know that all there is to rely on is the Lord because this is, you know, the um, Obamacare and all that is just going to be used as a hammer to destroy things. It's no good will come of it. And no good will come out of any of this. Um, I kind of think they know what they're doing, you know, and they know, they know that the Obamacare doesn't mean health care and they know that, you know, the, the election doesn't mean, um, you know, they know what things mean, but they have an agenda, which is supernatural and satanic and, and actually biblical. And God's going to allow them to do it because God wrote the Bible. So they are allowed to prosper and get done. Just like it says in Daniel, they can get this can happen. You know, this can happen. His power shall be mighty, but not of his own power. He shall destroy wonderfully. He shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper to do his pleasure. And he shall destroy the mighty ones and the holy people, mighty and holy. And through his policy, he shall cause witchcraft to prosper in his hand. It says craft, but I'm just putting in or trickery or you know, the craft, craftiness, if you like. But it's satanic, you know, it's, it's that power. And he'll shall magnify himself in his heart, and in their security shall he destroy many. In the security of health care, in the security of homeland security, he shall also stand up against the prince. And if there's a problem in martial law and there's food lines and all that, that's destroying many right there. Bank runs, banks closing, you know, real emergency kind of Armageddon stuff that you've thought about. All that's on the table now because America is damned due to the, and so the, the Mexicans 
immigrants, Hispanics, blacks, who all have the handout thing going, they're not going to get anything. They were just used to get this thing. This had nothing to do with that. No, they don't care about you. They care about getting the job that they're created to do done, that they are prophesied to do done, that they'll be protected by Yahweh, by Yahweh to get it done. And then they will be destroyed. That will be their reward for having done such a great job. It will be used by the Lord for good. What they meant for harm will ultimately be used for good. And in your life, everything meant for harm against you will be made for good in your life if you trust God completely with all your heart, mind, and soul. That's the only way you're getting out of this. Um, can you imagine sitting around the club? Say you had a fraternity and you, you know, were a, had an industry you were in and there was a club with leather chairs and, you know, like those old men's clubs and you sit around the club drinking, you know, your scotch, your 25 year old scotch. Can you imagine <laughs> looking out the window when the little people are coming with the pitchforks to <laughs> throw you out the window? I mean, it's, it's the, don't laugh. The communists, you know, took the capitalists and they threw them off the cliff in Spain. And, you know, of course, you know, in the Hemingway book, um, for whom the bell tolls, that whole scene was there. And in fact, the movie for whom the bell tolls showed these people being just thrown off the cliff. These were the people in the clubs and the, you know, the bourgeoisie. <laughs> uh, today, the bourgeoisie is in this vacuum, Paul. They don't know what to do. They're scared to death. They are traumatized. They're not able to speak publicly right now because they're traumatized. They can sit in their leather chair and the guy, you know, bringing the, um, the drink, the waiter, may just put strychnine in it now. I mean, in other words, it's, it's like we've seen over the ages, that kind of thing. In France, I remember in the 1789, the French Revolution on the countryside. The, and this is really important. The people who were landowners, who, you know, the big chateaus, you know, in France, you know, they had big spreads all the way down to Provence. You know, they had you know, big land, cattle, farms, wine, vineyards all over the place, house, outbuildings, servants, right? And then the servants turned against them and they no longer take orders. Then they felt that the, the rabble was leaving Paris and they're coming for them in the countryside. So they would line up their, their cannons and their guns and they would see a line of a guy, a, a cattle herder crossing the, the road with the cattle and they would open fire thinking there were the, the thundering hordes of people from Paris coming to cut their heads off. Because their maids and their servants already did turn against them and desert them and joined the rabble. That period of time in French history was called the Great Fear. It lasted for about two to four weeks. It wasn't a very long thing, but it was just a phenomenon that was really unbelievable. The bourgeoisie, the, 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 the French royalty, Many of these nobles and lords um, who own these lands feeling they would be killed. And then, of course, in, in the Russian Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution, the, the czar, his family, and the rest of them, they were killed. And all the landowners killed just for having land and being farmers. Don't think for a minute it's going to be any less the same spirit and the people that caused those things to happen are here running the show. Do we have a Robespierre here? Trish, do we have a Robespierre? Who's Robespierre today? He was kind of like, we got the various players. And by the way, a lot of these players were in secret societies called the Jacobin Society. In other words, part of the Illuminati and uh, masonry, and then there was a whole uproar about the Masons at that time. And ultimately, didn't they behead Robespierre in the end? Yeah. He, he supposedly was for the peasants, but he was a bourgeois. He had money. So they, be, they didn't trust him, so they beheaded him. 
<laughs> so this is nothing new, friends. Okay, those of you who don't know history, because you've been unfortunately, I I had the last bit of education that was available. You can read and educate yourselves, but I actually had a decent education because I had an education before the Marxists got in there to taint everybody. Oh, well, I'm not sure those Marxists weren't teaching about the French Revolution being good. But what I saw was the decadence in the countryside. Of course, you know, we're dealing with Marie Antoinette, Louis Says, you know, the whole thing that was going on there. Uh, <laughs> you know, of uh, uh, they called her Madame Deficit because the deficits they ran up were so huge and the people finally had, had enough and they, and they stormed them. And they arrested the king, and they killed the king, and they, you know, um, the victory. But here was the, here was the real crux of the French Revolution. Listen to this. They, the people, didn't get a dime. Oh, they cut the heads off, and they put the heads up on pikes, and even kids were cutting the heads off of animals, and imitating their parents, putting them on, and they were parading through the streets with the. The headless, you know, the heads of these people they hated up on these big pikes, like they won something, they didn't get a dime. The bourgeoisie, the people of the Enlightenment, the secret societies, they took over having gotten rid of the royalty, and they shared the spoil, not the people that caused the revolution to happen, i.e. Libya. The people got nothing, i.e. Egypt. The people got nothing. A share of the oil rights? Prosperity for all? We'll check every month? No. No, they were used, but it was the bourgeoisie, the elites and the rich. And I remind you, Obama is rich. And the people around him are millionaires. They're millionaires and billionaires who are causing him to continue. Because they know that the little people that caused the revolution, they'll be gotten rid of, as always, And the rich people will continue to take from the poor in the name of freeing the little people to be prosperous middle class, which will, that was Adolf Hitler's thing. They, it will never happen. Nothing that's going on now will aid the middle class, only their power. And when they get the power, then they don't need the people. The people will get zero. And the people in France got zero. And the people of Libya got Zero. And the people of Egypt got zero. And the people of Russia went into poverty. Zero. Why don't you just think about that? Think about that. Go read about it. Google the great fear and read about it. You know, the great fear of those people, yes, they were decadent. Yes, they had... Soirees and orgies and abuse their servants and whatnot. Sure, they did all that. And they paid. And then the bourgeoisie got the money. And the little people are still today barely able to make ends meet. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. With that, I bid you shalom, shalom. And Zeph Daniel, the Zedja studio. I must mention this record is really coming together. This is something that You cannot get through CCM. You will not get, you just don't get music with this kind of spirit on it anywhere. But, you know, it's it's a different ball game for me. I've, you know, I learned, taught by the best how to mix, how to produce records of the same level as L.A. and New York and whatnot. And that's what will will come and completely unfettered by the world's vicissitudes. It's something that you can't get. And I'm, I'm just not going to play the game asking if you'll like it. I will just say, if you like this, then it would be a need because it is an elixir and it will help you. If you don't get this record, you will... It's kind of like, this is your chance for worship. This is your chance to put something, you know... You can put it on for your Christian friends and it'll irritate them to no end, even though it's beautiful music. I mean, pretty beautiful music. Really some outstanding things that are going on in the studio. 
And uh, I'm just looking forward in the, in the days ahead to, uh, to share with you all about it. You know, it's taken, you know, you haven't seen me because I've been working my butt off. It's been, it's just when you, to, to mix right, to actually do it right. I'm not talking about doing it on your computer and pushing a button to master it and boom, there it is. I did that for years because I, I didn't know better until I got training to do it right. And doing it right takes a certain amount of time and structure to actually set it up and do it exactly the way it's done. Chicago, New York, LA, Nashville, whatever. It takes uh, education, obviously, you know, creativity, ears, you know, those can't be taught. But if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. And like I said, I've, I've been blessed with this capability to put out, to be like a label almost, you know, or, or a, 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 a studio that can put out the same level. And I work with various people, and, you know, and, and you will have a variety of things. But the point is, is what I want to present is the very best, the very best, the most, let me put it this way. When I say best, I mean the most powerful and yet sublime, even fun songs, you know, just really fun kind of songs you want to kind of move to, but with this other spirit, you know, this thing that isn't going through David Geffen and Capitol Records and, you know, <laughs> and, and Nashville and, you know, the, the, the church industry. And I'm not saying we won't, you know, I want to get these, some of this played and even hopefully the artists will be able to, you know, perform some of this in, in, in a church setting because they really need it. You know, these are people that beg God every day and look how they fail every day. I feel so sorry for them. And they go around saying, you know, then they get defensive and go, my prayers work. See, I had cancer. We, everyone prayed over me and now I don't. So I'm, mm -hmm. why don't we just add up all the ones that weren't answered? And let's compare those to the ones that are. And let's look at the faith. Do you have faith to step out from your church if Yahweh called you? And is the church bondage holding you there? You know, they need this music because the music is, it's all about what's going on right now. It is prophecy in these forms of you know, nonlinear thought and nonlinear dimensional existence. And then yet dealing with prophecy of ancient to today. And at the same time, with a happy kick in your step spirit, you can't, can't beat it. It's just, I wish I could, you know, um, after I got this track done yesterday, which is called Restoration, which is basically a, a I don't think I'm giving anything away by saying this, but it, basically it's a tune about all the false prophets out there doing gloom and doom. We didn't even do gloom and doom today. I'm just point, pointing out the way it is, you know, but, but I mean, all this gloom and doom that they've done and going on coast to coast and all this in the name of Jesus, uh, not reaching anybody really, you know? So the song is about, you know, what the Lord wants to do to his people is in the midst of this, restore them. In the midst of this collapse of a Babylon thing, destroy, restore them. Not just to where they were when they were younger, but to a supernatural. Hello? Uh, I'm losing something here. Okay. Yeah, I pulled the, the mic out of my earphone. But yes, the, 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 so the tune is about restoration. Basically what it talks about, it was really a big vocal tune. Huge, huge vocal tracks, big harmonies big bold music to go along and 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 a wonderful melody and the thing is is that the message of it was restoration has come with the lord see in the midst of this what i had to say kind of comes to an end because it's a done thing there, there's no need to go oh this is going to happen do you realize if you don't repent, this is going to, you know, it happened. But what's the real thing? Restoration. Is it all the news ginning up the fear, the conspiracy blogs, and all those things? They're going to talk about those deep, dark, awful, horrific things they do. Well, haven't we been through that? 
Is there anything that you can imagine that's evil that they wouldn't do? Or that somebody wouldn't do somewhere? Absolutely. We all have the human condition. But I'm talking about restoration. That there's a huge thing to come next in America. For those of the Lord, restoration. Supernatural profiting while, you know, others are unsuccessful. You know, the Lord making a way here and there to live, you know, causing us to have more and more faith, restoring our bodies, our minds, our, you know, you know, preparing us for this eternal life thing. And this is the kingdom coming within and without. And everyone's going to want that because they're going to have nothing. The other way didn't work. The way of gloom and doom, um, you know, we, it happened already. So it was prophesied, you know, by many people. And then it came to pass. And, and now we're on the other side of that. And now it's about these wonderful things in the midst of the horrors coming to the earth. It couldn't be more of a dichotomy. It couldn't be more amazing. So that's what that song is about. And I was, you know, mixing up various versions yesterday to get just the right. You know, the thing about mixing is when you do it right, it's very hard. It's hard work, very hard work and very time consuming. You know, people do an album, it takes a, you know, a year to get it mixed and mastered. It's just, it's just amazing how much time it takes to do it right. Now, anyone today can buy, buy a program, a reason or this and that as I've done and then spin it out off their laptop, but that's not necessarily, and I'm not saying that they can't have a hit every once in a while, but that's not mixing. That's not what I mean. What I mean is creating this world that's not here. It's not, when something's not mixed right, it's like there's no distance between you and the artist. You're just kind of, you're there and you can criticize it, you know, like it or don't, you know, it's, it's, it's right there. It just, there's nothing totally special about it because the work hasn't been done. The creativity hasn't gone in. The choices, the extra layers of vocal tracks, the, the extra, the changing of things, the moving of things around, making it something special because it just deserves to be that. I mean, garbage in, garbage out. But I mean, when you have something really good, it deserves the work. And I was taught by one of the best, by a Grammy Award winning guy. And when I saw him mix, I was like, oh my goodness. And I would, you're still here, dude. I can't believe it. You're still, you know, it's like, oh, really? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? And so I was able to have this hands-on training and, um, really understand I really got I think I got it I mean it's gonna you know it takes time to you, know, you have everything but you really get what is involved you know which gives me and I guess I learned fast because Yahweh blessed me with the with the ability to to really absorb it and I really love it you know what I mean I really am just fascinated with it it's just everything about sound I just love I don't know what it is it could be just birds chirping I just love sound and, um, and I love working in the studio, even though I know my whole life is going by and I'm not exactly seeing the trees and the forest and the, the flowers and whatnot, but it, it's okay. It's, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's got to be done because the world needs this music. This music, I will go even further and say, because some of you have said, you know, there's a signature sometimes on music I produce that causes a, some people to have a healing or some people to have an experience with God or something moves. It's, yeah. So let's take that further and put that on steroids. It moves and then big. It heals, but big. It's a sign and wonder and supernatural and big, huge, just bigger than that storm. Bigger than what they all intend for harm. Because they're all about revenge and pettiness and harm. See, that's what's going to do them in in the end anyway. So... Don't know what the, you know, it's coming pretty soon. And, and, you know, we'll be having our mastering session coming up here after Thanksgiving. And hopefully at that point, just after that, and really maybe before Christmas, there would be a, um, oh, I know that's a pagan holiday. Yes. I'm, don't worry. Your precious little being a God and proclaiming things is still safe. You still have your listeners out there who will fear and cower when they see this pagan tree or a, a manger scene in the wrong time. It should have been a Rosh Hashanah or, you know, 
thereabouts. I'm sorry. Maybe I've just gotten too old to... Uh... No, I'm not old. I'm young. I mean, I'm young in an older body, but... Now, I guess there's just certain things that kind of... You know, it's just not going to fly. But anyway, um, so the... So the idea is to, when you have something worth mixing, it's, and then on like day two, you know, day one is organizing it. You know, when you get all the elements, you know, again, it's got to be great. Garbage in, garbage out. Great in, great out. But then you spend, spend a day sort of setting it up and organizing it, right? Cataloging it. The clips, it just takes time. And then, you know, it could be like a, up to a couple of days of, you know, then you start with one instrument, and you get the right sound, and you go to another one. Then you group them, and you you know th this is what they've done in the studios from the from the beginning, to give you whatever kind of sound that hit record sound or that radio sound that you that people that you like it anyway. I know you like it because you keep putting up those YouTubes of those famous mixes. And what you're not being told, I want to tell you, nobody doing amateur stuff is going to measure up to those because they can't mix on that level because they weren't taught how to do that. And the gear you need to do it is really expensive. So that's going to, I mean, it's getting better with the computer, but the computer mixing is still, unless you're really, really good. If you're really good, you can do it. But I mean, if you don't know about the frequencies and all the different things, you can't, it's, it's just, it's something that takes people years and years and years. A lot of these guys that have created such amazing sonic tableaus, they've been you know, 20, 30 years at it. You know, and then win their Academy Award for the mix on a James Horner score or something. You know, it's but there's a tradition to it, and there's a reason they do all the things they do, and it's basically beyond rocket science. And I've been fortunate enough to be having to be trained to to do it in the last few months, which you didn't see, didn't really talk about. And then the first effort we're coming out of this studio with is is you know producing this artist and we're, we're mixing and, you know, she'll be out there on her own. But you know, the, the point is, is that that's coming out of this studio and you'll see, you'll hear. And, uh, I mention it only because that's what I did all day yesterday. I mixed, it was really hard work. My ears finally, I just had to walk away and realize we're almost there, you know, but it's just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not an easy thing. You know, it takes time. It takes time to learn. But I'm so blessed because God brought me a a guy who he grew up in the studios of LA. He was there at 19 years old and just grew up in those studios. He grew up there. He um, you know, was on the team to mix just about every artist that you've ever heard of. And then he got out of LA, he got out of Babylon, and he started his own company. But the point is, is that, uh, you know, having that kind of training is, is you wouldn't get it at Full Sail University or Berkeley School of Music or anything. You wouldn't get that, that thing that I've been through. And I'm just so grateful that that happened because now, <laughs> the master of the universe, now I can actually put out material that is on the same par. And when that happens... I don't know what's going to happen, but I have a feeling that um, it will really be responded not only well to, but it'll be like mana, you know, be like, oh God, you know, and I do like a lot of music. I mean, like, you know, one of the, the I don't want to get into a music talk right now. We'll do it later. And with that, I bid you, but you know, it's, since it's my life, you know, that's basically my life and my life's work. I wanted you to share a little bit about that with you. I will be, you know, we'll be sharing some bits and pieces of the music and interviewing the artist and having all that as we get closer because it's a really, really amazing uh, person that's to, that's writing these tunes. And um, 